up YouTube, Zach here, Veteran Construction. I got a great special video for you guys covering this game-changing product called the Pitch Hopper. So you may see some clips of me up on this witch's hat already. I'm gonna show you guys that it's, that it's real. We're gonna test out that name Pitch Hopper and hop up on this pitch. I mean, come on. This is a 2012. Just goes to show you how much grip this thing has when it's used on what it's supposed to be used on. It's not meant for a 2012. But a lot of these polo shirt guys, they're doing their demonstrations in their warehouses on plywood and on felt. Now these things, they got grip on it. You see it's not going anywhere, but that's not what it's designed for, okay? Now, you will see me in these clips using them on felt or plywood. You know, I'm using that at my discretion and I'm keeping my safety stuff on. I've got tow boards down. Uh, I've got my ropes and my harnesses on, okay, because this is not a safety, it's not a piece of safety equipment, okay, this is a safety aid by OSHA standards, right, so it can aid in your safety in many ways, like staying safe on these roof pitches, or even getting up and down this ladder, you know what I'm saying, so, um, again, this is not to be used in place of your safety equipment, I don't want anybody getting hurt because they see me monkeying around on this stuff, okay. I'm still using my harness in, in any any situation where I'm a little bit sketched out, but again, these things got a ton of grip. They're designed for 9-12 to 12-12 pitches. This year's an 8-12, but really I don't care if you're on a stick or a walker, you need a pitch hopper. So um, before we go on, I do want to show you guys something, okay? This this pitch hopper here, it's got grip doing this downward pressure right I'm standing straight up and down but I'm gonna admit to you guys and again this is because I do not want to see anybody get hurt okay I've had a couple slips on these it's, it's not that thing's fault it's my fault right they're designed this downward pressure here but you know we're so used to shingling off chicken ladders and all kinds of things but you're really used to stretching this thing will start to slide okay I'll show you a better demonstration over here on this 12 -inch. I'm gonna reach for a coil or something over here, it can go, all right? So you guys gotta be really careful about that. And I can't stress enough, use your safety equipment. Don't trust this thing, you know, with your life, especially if you're on pitches above a 12-12 or using it on felt or plywood, okay? All right, so before we jump into just how great this product is, I'm gonna tell you guys the one thing, my little moan, groan, slash complaint, and that's, uh, that's, you can see here, this is the 912 and this is the 1212. Well, they've got some markers pointing down, but they kind of blend it with the black, I'm telling you 1212 here, 912 here. Sometimes I go to throw this thing down and I got it the wrong way. I'm an impatient shingler. So I like to know right away, but not to worry. Just like any tradesman would do, I solved that problem myself. I went ahead and threw paint on the side that I'm typically using a little bit less. You guys know I don't like the steep one, so. When I'm on the fly, I'll know 812 right here. Oh. All right, that was my only little thing. Nothing Pitch Hopper needs to worry about. If I were them, I'd be worrying about getting a coil dispenser in here. You know what I mean? Just hit a button, slide it out, that'd be sick. It'd be the only thing that could make this product any better, I'd say. But uh, yeah, so a little bit about this thing. Comes in at 32 inches here. I got all 32 inches. I bought two originally. Ended up coming back to buy four more because I loved them. Uh, they didn't provide these for me. You can tell by the wear on them and on the bottom and everything, I used the heck out of these things. And that's, I reached out to them and that's why we're making this video here. So coming in at 32 inches wide, this one here weighs about six to seven pounds, right? So super light, able, able to move it real easily. And uh, they make them in black here. But me, I like to shingle in shorts. I haven't had too much of an issue with these things getting hot. It's been above 90 a couple days this week, but they do make the yellow ones that are uh, more reflective and I think they absorb up to 50% more heat, okay? So they also come in 24 inch and they'll be a little bit cheaper. I haven't yet looked at the prices. They, they just had to adjust some prices here. But uh, the yellow ones are a little bit more expensive and obviously the 32s are a little more expensive than the 24s, okay? But they got a bunch of bundle deals that you can do on their website. And uh, I'm not sure how long, but we do have a promo code, okay? So if you guys are already convinced based off the intro and based off this discussion I've had with you guys already that you want to buy these things, you can go straight to the website. You can use the promo code VETERAN and still get an automatic 5% discount. So that's all, only promo codes running right now for this product so you can get them cheaper now than anywhere else, all right? So 
I may have covered everything. Anything I didn't cover, listen, we'll be covering it uh, during this video. I've got great footage of me shingling on the 12-12 side with the chicken ladders. Other 12-12 side, they're identical, using just two pitch hoppers, comparing the speed and comfort and things like that. And uh, many, many more examples. So stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. One last thing I forgot to mention before we move on. I don't know how long this promo code is going to run. It could be a day, three days, a week, a month. I have no clue. I anticipate between one and two, one and two weeks. Never know though, so you guys need to get on top of this and get this now because I'm not sure how long I can save you guys money for. So if you got to do the whole transfer funds thing, pull money out of Coinbase, two, three business days, that whole gig, get on it. All right, YouTube, this one's not just for the roofers. This one's for maybe hanging Christmas lights and gutters. The polo shirt talkers, the door knockers, the roofers on steep pitch or a walker, even a doctor in a helicopter. You need a pitch hopper. I'm going to explain to you in this video why. So the remainder of this video will be a voiceover uh, just because I have so many clips. There's just too much to cover. So this right here is exactly what I expected to use these things for. Me standing on one, keeping my bundle on the other. So we're going to be going over... All the different uses that I found for it like this one here I just didn't expect this to be this easy so I threw this right here in the beginning pulling that bundle right from the top that's crazy here's me just having a little fun with it this is the second side I got the shingle I mean just slamming these bundles down on it it don't budge no problem at all look at that jumping on it I'm just loving this product at this time so um, you guys know me when I get new tools and things like that. I'm like a kid at a candy store. So just really, really having some fun here. So, um, yeah, let's just get right into the different ways that, you know, I found to use this product that I didn't expect. For one, being able to get up and down ladders on an 812 without scarring the shingles that have already been installed. That's prime right there. You know, this is a heavy traffic area, bringing up ice shield and things like that. Those, those shingles right there would be destroyed. We had a couple 90 degree days. So uh, I didn't expect them to be this good on tear offs either. Let me check that out. We're all on, we're all on pitch hoppers. Caden's cleaning that, that pipe flashing there. No problem with that flat bar. He's right on top of it. And here we are just getting down to the bottom. Didn't even need to, um, you know, once we pulled that board off, we didn't have to pound it any higher to be able to tear this off. Usually we have to put it right back into the plywood after we take it out of the shingles. You know, after in the area that we tore off, so we're down to the plywood on this. These things, this is an 812. They stick really good to the 812. There, I've even I've even got it on my rope and it didn't go anywhere. Um, we have Boy Cub's the only one not on one. That's because he at this moment still <laughs> isn't super trustworthy of. I don't know why he had a harness on and that new guy there, Froggy, uh, he's monkeying around on it just fine. Look at that, cleaning that gutter, no problem. So again, this one, this is something that can help homeowners. You know cleaning gutters, hanging Christmas lights. You guys got to get up on your roof once or twice a year. So this can make that a little simpler and much safer. So yeah, I mean, did not expect to be able to take this gutter off from the top either on an 812. Never. I mean, I've only ever done that on walkers. So no issue there. Lean over, unscrew it. And uh, don't worry about where we dropped that. We had plenty of, uh, plywood covering that deck and giant tarp so there's no harm done but yeah i mean look at this this is a 12 12 pitch i put the pitch gauge on every pitch of this roof that uh you know that i wanted to check so again main body's an 812 everything else is a 12 12 besides that 2012 witch's hat and here we are just no problem standing on this thing being able to monkey around i even throw it up crooked right there and i still got all the grip i could ever need so uh, Boy Cub's got a great place to grab for me. He, you know, he's throwing control piles. He's not down in that valley. Typically, we'd have somebody way down in that valley right there, sitting there waiting for uh, shingles. You can even see that pitch hopper actually stopped the cap right there from falling and hitting my truck. So that was nice. Um, yeah, I mean, this thing is extremely comfortable. I, I can't really imagine throughout history that there's ever been a more comfortable roofer on a 12 12 unless they too have a pitch hopper in which case congratulations sir or ma'am that's awesome for you so yeah i'm on my knee here i kind of just switch off between a knee and sitting down so you'll see that here just sitting down on a 12 12 working it you know so i mean that's amazing it, it's it's hard for me to really explain to you guys 
if especially if someone hasn't really been on 1212s or even 812s or 912s just just how handy that is to be able to do right there you know I'm, I'm not sitting with my butt on the ridge i'm not kneeling on the ridge with my my heel on the on the very point of it or anything and here i'm just demonstrating basically how we'd be doing this if there wasn't a pitch hopper right there and that's not even an exaggeration on the loss of balance there that flailiness i like to move fast as most roofers do i know i'm not going anywhere so i'm just trying to get it done and over with um but look at that all that's avoided the minute I step on that pitch hopper, which, by the way, is on a 12-12 on the on the tar paper, you know. So I mean, if if they're sticking, they're sticking. Be you know, feel free to use them once they're yours. Nobody can really tell you what you're doing with them. You know, I feel like it's my responsibility to show you guys these kinds of things. I mean, I found so many ways just to just to feel safer. I've got a nice controlled pile. I'm not losing pieces, that are flying off, hitting siding or anything. I'm able to grip that thing perfectly tight and get the job done. So. Right here, you can see how sketch I am. This is absolutely the first time I put that thing on the 12-12. But, you know, you really have to have that correct pressure on it. So I'm very much making sure that that's done. And I'm just nailing this board on. I go do the same thing at the bottom right here. And once that's complete, I just take that pitch hopper. I push it out uh, past the tow board, get a knee on it, have somebody hand me another board, uh, slide it down to my feet and uh, you can see right there I'm adjusting the tow board a little more level a little more square with the roof before I put that second nail in I was able to do this across that entire bottom without issue so um, that was pretty crazy for me and here's just my brother capturing the angle you know standing on that 12 12 so yeah this part was wild I didn't really expect to do this but I started peeling that paper I, was testing the pitch hopper out I got my harness on and it was sticking to that plywood fine so I was able to shimmy across two of them on this entire 30 foot run without issue I even actually took the gutters off from right there as well which again is absolutely insane we didn't have to have a guy moving a ladder or anything down at the bottom we had guy we had a guy on each side with ladders leaned against the house and they just kind of caught the gutter once I had all my screws out but I was able to reach over on a 12 12 find the screws and unscrew that gutter so that was wild to me. And right here, I'm just kind of getting a feel for the tear off. This is a good time, uh, really, really getting to know this product and and finding its many uses. I'm gonna break down tear offs for you guys real quick here. So I just want to explain to you guys how we used to have to tear off. This is probably a 912. So anything that was like a seven, eight, or nine, depending on height and things like that, we used to leave nails. Occasionally, like I'll, I'll pop, I'll pop most of the nails, but, and I'm only doing this because I'm in a very safe spot here. Um, but you know, you leave nails for grip. That way, you can go down. Like, let's just be real. This is just what roofers do. This is what we've done since the beginning of time. So, you know, you leave a nail, and then you got something, and you just continue to tear off. All right. So I find another nail over here, and I use the shingles as bracing too. You know, this is the old way before the pitch hopper, you know, back in the day, back in the olden times, which for me was as recent as last week. That's how we used to do it. All right, now I left another nail. I've got this in there. I've got it all braced up. Now we got a nail to go to. And this is how we used to stay on top of it before we got that good thing, so... Now we're just chilling, you know what I'm saying? They need a damn cup holder on this thing. All right, back to it. This is me drying in the 1212 using these two pitch hoppers. I'm just doing it by myself. Um, I had it on the ice shield in the bottom. I wasn't exactly sure if I was going to be able to do it this way uh, with the pitch hoppers going up this just because, you know, they're not meant for felt. And, you know, again, once they have a little bit of dust on them, it can get, they can get a little bit less grip going, especially on felt. Not, not so much shingles, but on the felt. So I'm just putting safety first here, getting a feel for it. So I was genu genuinely surprised and very happy that this was actually working out this way. I didn't have to run over the ridge, grab a tow board, call for somebody else to do it who's busy doing something else. And I just bring this other one in here and... You know just get right up on it so listen if you buy one here's the thing i promise you you're going to want another but if you're not convinced yet just look how well these things complement each other that would have been a hard spot to get to 
if, if I just had one pitch hopper. But the fact that I just had another one right there, I kind of keep two by me at all times. I was able just to put another one there and feel a little bit extra safe to get that done. Here I am just bouncing on it. It's not really going anywhere. All right, I'm going to pause the video right here for a little bit of story time. So you can see we're setting these two by fours on this pitch hopper. That's awesome, right? We got a place for it. Well, the last time that I saw a guy fall off a roof, we were doing this exact same thing, pounding in tow boards, getting the shingles loaded. Well, we hadn't finished pounding in our tow boards yet, and the shingles were up there, so we had we had a stray two by four chilling. Uh, we didn't get we didn't pound it in yet. So somebody put it on the forks on the crane. Well, that thing gets to swaying. Next thing you know, uh, two by four is gone. It's sliding off the roof. Thank God it didn't hit the. Uh, it didn't hit a window or anything down there. That would have been a really, really bad headache for me. But what what's crazy is it was sliding off the roof. It went down in the valley. It hooked out of there. And it landed uh, inside of a ladder rung that was leaned up down on the ground. So there was a ladder leaned on the wall. The 2x4 landed in one of the rungs. Therefore, about a foot of it was hanging up on the roof. So we sent the guy down there to get it. Well, this guy was kind of new. And he went and stood right on the ice shield, slipped... And the 2 by 4 ended up between his legs, and he went down. And uh, it, it forced him to the side, too, so he landed on his shoulder. It was a really bad time. Uh, but this entire situation could have been 100% avoided if we had the pitch hopper up there just to set materials on. Okay, so onward. And here we are just unloading some bundles. Uh, we got boy cub on the ridge. You know, it's kind of just the way it's set up, you know. Um, there's not really, you won't be, if both of you are below the boards, you won't be able to reach it. So one guy's got to be on the ridge, but typically you got two guys right on top of each other and it's kind of an awkward thing. But the fact that I had the pitch hopper to put below the tow board kept us both out of each other's way, uh, made it really easy to get this roof unloaded. And you can see we're doing the same thing on the left. We've got two guys over there. So th I think this is going really, really smooth, just doing it this method and we got this thing off in record, record time. I very much attribute uh, the credit to that to the pitch hoppers. All right, now this is the absolute first time that I was shingling, getting my feel for it. I was extremely impressed with how low I could reach. I was able to do the gutter apron and the starter, no problem there, as well as the starter rows. Um, again, we got ice, we got it's got better grip in my opinion on the ice shield than it does the felt, and it also has better grip on the plywood than the ice shield, I'd say. Or that one's pretty close. That one's a close second. Uh, my ice shield actually might be the second best, in my opinion, as far as what this thing sticks to. Uh, you can see that it, it's brand new at this point. Um, but yeah, I get my couple rows on, and I just drop that thing below. I mean, I've even got a little bit hanging off the roof there, totally comfortable, getting a little cut on that left-handed rake, um, putting these shingles on. No issue. I, and look at that. I got my bundle right above me. I don't need any help at all. No tosser. No nothing. This thing's just going and it's going smooth. Here I am on a left-handed rake cutting that thing. American flag waving high. No issue. I mean, I'm able to do that cut, that rake cut, the exact same way that you guys have always seen me do it. But I, the thing is, I probably wouldn't be able to do that unless I had pounded a tow board in. There would be no cutting my rake like this. I'd be cutting every single piece as I go. I would be doing things out of my uh, normal habitual shingling style. So, um, again, same thing, different side. Uh, this is me. I'm doing a lot of talking because I do plan to post these videos for you guys so you can see live my, my enthusiasm and my experience uh, as it comes along using these pitch hoppers. I'm very excited to use these things. So... Um, I was doing a little bit of talking there. We'll save that for another date, another time. But, you know, that's a, sh that's a hard shingle to reach, just like this is. And just because I've got that pitch hopper there, it, I'm making it look super easy. Do not be fooled. Those shingles, the far ones out by that rake, if you were to put your foot in the valley and try to be stretching to that, you'd have no grip on, your, on that off foot, on my right foot. You see how my right foot's on that pitch hopper right now? It would be, let's pretend I was lower and a little further out like I was, it would be on a, uh, you know, a cushion or, you know, or just on the roof and it would be very uncomfortable. I'd be slipping. Uh, it'd be at a different angle than it is. I'm able to just plant that foot, no issue, and take this roof to pound town. So I'm just slamming a couple out here for you guys. You guys know I like them gravy runs. I just finally got out of that little chicken bone in the corner. Trying to get them, trying to get that chicken wet with a little gravy. You know what I'm saying? So... Pumping it out, back down to the dry little chicken bone. Here I am cutting that rake. Um, I mean, look at 
I mean, I'm just kind of chilling there on my knee. If this was a different time, I'd be all puckered up. I'd have my foot in that tree. This would not be going very smooth. I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't even be cutting these again. I would have had to have done it a different way, you know? I got that double thick part here on that next shingle, so I had to strike it a few extra times. It's down low. It's a little tough to get to, but I'm very impressed that I was able to complete it just because I have that pitch hopper there. All right. And again, here's just a better demonstration of up high. I mean, I'm cutting this. This is a 912 pitch, and I'm over here ripping this rake like I'm on a walker. That's insane to me. And few people will understand exactly how crazy that is. Uh, I hope you guys are one of the few, and I hope you understand that, um, you know, this review here uh, is authentic. And, uh, you know, I I'm telling you guys exactly what I feel and exactly what I believe. So let's get right into the fun stuff here. Uh, we got the world's fastest shingler using chicken ladders on one side versus the world's fastest shingler using just two pitch hoppers on the other side. So we're going to kind of compare uh, what we're doing here and why. Uh, you can see on the top screen I had to take very few shingles and I had to sling them over my hip just to kind of have them close. But on that bottom screen I was able to slap most of my bundle right there on that pitch hopper right above my working area completely out of my way and the shingles are able to stay nice and flat. They're not getting bent over that hip. So, again, I'm just transferring more shingles whenever I feel like it. Um, these two sides here are exactly identical. So, we put the toe boards on at the bottom. Uh, you know, did just three rows across on the bottoms. Got the toe boards on. I put three bundles and some coils down on the toe boards. And I put three bundles up a little closer to the peak. You can kind of see in the video uh, where that toe board is and some bundles. So, they're both set up the exact same. I used about... Uh, two square and two bundles total so I have to go up and take two bundles from the ridge so if you look at that bottom screen you can see I'm just finally standing on that pitch hopper for the first time having no issue reaching up to create my step I'm just transferring these things around uh, actually, I actually had the chicken ladder I just moved right there on that bottom screen I kept it there just in case I need it to get these bundles um, you know these, I'm not necessarily making the case that on this 12-12, just because I have two pitch hoppers, I, I wouldn't need the chicken ladders. They're kind of just assets, really. Um, but I ended up not using it at all, surprisingly. So that was pretty cool. And you can see I'm just moving quick on that, just being able to uh, scoot these things along and, and uh, you know, have them complement each other well. So up on that top one, I probably moved that chicken ladder around a couple times. It's kind of got my way. I haven't needed to use it yet. Typically, I'd, I more or less just go out as far as I can, uh, reaching as high as I can before I start to use those. So, yeah. And then uh, on that bottom screen, if you've seen me grab that bundle, you should probably go rewind it. If you look real close, uh, I had a little bit of a struggle. I kind of froze up for a second. Reason being, again, these aren't meant for felt. And what I did was I had it on the felt, which is, which is fine. I, I felt safe on it. These things, um, I just felt like I had enough grip. The thing was, I put it a little too low to be grabbing a bundle, so I kind of had that moment. Thank God I didn't freeze up too much or end up losing that bundle. But uh, yeah, just you'll you'll see. I have a lot easier time moving these things when I just kind of keep those pitch hoppers up high. And if I have to work them down, I can move it from one to the other to the other. It's no no issue. So I kind of just set them on my feet and, and go along. So up on the chicken ladders on this other side, one thing. <laughs> one thing you never notice is how uncomfortable this is until you really realize like I might have a better way to do it so I shingled this chicken ladder side first and I can't tell you how bad my feet hurt up on that thing and that's stuff that kind of gets overlooked as we go along because we're just like oh this is a this is the best way I can do it not everybody's even using these chicken ladders some people put toe boards in and and blah 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 like I'll smoke them and man that stuff hurt and then here I go with the bigger the bigger chicken ladder uh, that's just the that's just the inside piece of a frame, you know, like a gorilla or a little giant. And uh, again, I'm having to move those around on that on that top screen just because they're kind of in my way until I need them. You know, I mean, I could have put them maybe over the ridge or something, but I was trying to just kind of have whatever I need by me. Um, once you get down on that toe board, it's not really ideal to be getting running up above the ridge and all the way back down to it. So yeah, we're just kind of moving along here and. Uh, I mean, it it looks like I'm smoking the 
pitch hopper one versus the other one and I and and I can assure you I did both of these first thing in the morning back-to-back -back videos uh, same exact pace I mean you can't really try any harder on a whole three square side than you do the other one I mean you really have to find find a pace that you can hold the whole time anyway so I don't think I had any better conditioning or anything on the second day if anything I had a little added back pain from using them chicken ladders my feet hurt like hell to be quite honest with you so uh, it is really nice to be able to have that that platform just to kind of stand up on when you can get that little break while you're shingling and just get just stand up straight and give that back a little stretch that that's prime right there you know that that pays dividends in the end so um yeah i mean i just grabbed that bundle from the ridge i'm able to scoot this thing along i have no problem being able to cut my scrap you know the way that i do my hips i kind of put a bunch of pieces up nail them on i come back through i cut them and I'm able just to, I have a place to stack those. I don't got to put them on the hip and they slide off or anything like that. Uh, you don't really have much room for that using the chicken ladders or uh, especially if you're going to try and do this on a cushion. Um, you can see how hard I'm trying to stretch up there on that top video just to reach those shingles. Uh, that, you know, like I said, man, that stuff, that stuff gets to you. It, it hurts your back when you're stretching. Look, I got a whole bundle just kind of put up on the top of that chicken ladder and it's, it's kind of working, not an entire bundle, but as much as I could fit, whatever was left in it. But it, it look at the stretch off the little one and now I got my shingle stuck on that chicken ladder. What am I going to do? I'll come over here, move that around and, you know, so, I mean, we're, we're going on an hour right now. I, I did put those timers there. I don't think I mentioned it already, so you guys can, you guys can really compare, you know, how far along one per one the bottom video is compared to the top one. I mean, I'm a minute or I'm an hour or two in that thing wrapped up, so let's just pay attention to this loser here, uh, moving these chicken ladders all over the place, you know, look at trying to find a good place for his bundle. And it's not a bad way to do it, but after using them chicken ladders, I promise you, I would not use. Uh, after using the pitch hoppers, I won't be using the chicken ladders again. Not on a 12-12, not on a 10-12, maybe on a, a 14 or something like that if I if, if the pitch hoppers ain't sticking because, again, they're only meant for 9-12 to 12-12. But, you know, you can see there exactly how I was doing my other hip. Same thing. But, look, I'm having to cut those in place because I don't, I don't really have the uh, an area to set them or anything. I'm stuck walking all the way up here, and, you know, it's just – it's kind of a nightmare. I don't know what's happening there. My brother's terrible at filming, but yeah. I mean, it's it's almost painful to watch at this point with how bad that this whooping is. And here's the crazy thing. Now, I know I busted this side out with the chicken ladders. Like, it is absolutely busted out. I didn't take a single break. I didn't stop for water. You know, that's an accomplishment there on its own. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at doing hips. Like, I've got a nice way to do it. I, there's There's no thinking for me. It's the same way every time. It's... You know, I use my, I, I start well and I use my scrap to speed me up on the hip side. And it, I mean, it goes smooth. Now imagine I finished this and someone came up and said, Hey, nice job, bud. Hour, 18 minutes. Uh, but I think I can beat you by 15 minutes or even I, I can do it in an hour. You, listen, uh, the first thought I'm going to have is you're out of your mind. Second thing is I'm going to start thinking, okay, I'm about to make some money here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be like, okay, well, are you going to set everything up the same? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll set everything up the same. Okay, are you going to use a lift? No lift. You know, well, I, at that point, I don't care what they're using. I'm taking that bet all day, you know. I mean, if they say five minutes or maybe eight minutes or ten minutes even, I might start to reconsider that bet. But for the most part, you, you're you not beating me by no 15 minutes. And here I go, you know, I'm having my, a hard time wrapping my head around this, honestly, right now. Like, we've just got this little platform with, with some cushion adhered to it. And, you know, this guy got spanked by 16 minutes. This chicken ladder guy. I mean, it's absolutely insane when you think about it. So, um, yeah, I got some clips here for you guys. Just me kind of, you know, doing some a skylight and moving some bundles and doing this little dormer here for the rest of it. But I'll just tell you guys in, in closing here, again, I've got about six of these pitch hoppers. I've got all 32 in black. I haven't had is any issue with the heat so far. Uh, we've had, you know, again, degree, deg uh, like 90 degree days. So, uh, no issue so far, but they are sending me the yellow ones and I'm pretty pumped to use those. They look a little cooler. Um, they're a little less mistakable for, you know, standard old garbage on a roof or what have you. So, um, yeah, these things are awesome. If, uh, if, if, if I've helped you guys get any better in any kind of way, or even if you've just enjoyed my videos, feel free to pay it forward. 
and uh, you know buy these through me using my promo code and uh, I want to make a challenge for everybody if you guys uh, plan to buy them uh, I think that maybe you guys should bring it up to your bosses if, if some of you are employed and see if you guys can get them to purchase four or five share this video with them um, you know because you know, moving bundles around at the ridge you know when you get to the very top and it's like oh, we got to pop these boards where do we put these bundles there's a million different ways to do it even even breaking cap up I didn't show any of that just I, having two of these to break cap up on you stand on one put a bundle up on the one above you break up the cap and stack it on the one that you're standing on it's I mean you don't get that on an 812 anywhere else you just don't you st you stack your stuff on the ridge it blows off etc I mean it's just the way things have been so again um, I thank you guys for your support. I thank you for paying it forward. I thank you for your like and your share. All right.